I sound like an infomercial. Are you, <laughs> you ready? ready? Are you ready to channel your pain? Let's do this. I'm Nally, and welcome to The Nally Show, where I help you beat your battles and be the best version of you. Are you someone who feels isolated in your pain, like when you're hurting so bad you just want to hide from the world, crawl in your bed, and never come out? Well, I'm here to tell you, what a waste of your pain! Today, I'm chilling with Steven Voice, singer, songwriter, and overall talented artist. Together, we want to prove to you that you can take your pain and turn it into something beautiful, just like he did when his mother sadly passed away fell into depression, and not only had suicidal thoughts, but actually committed suicide. He likes to say that he miraculously survived, and since then, he's turned to music to save him. And some of his best songs come from his darkest times, just like some of my best blog posts are during my downest days. Together, we want to give you five tips to channel your pain, so you don't miss a minute of your life. He's on his way now, so we will see you soon. So Steven, what do you want to drink? We have water, and inside of it, we can add um, lemon and cucumber. He's not British. Steven. Yes. Thank you so much for coming on the Natalie Show. Thank you show. for having me on the Natalie. I have to take my hat off, oh, or my headscarf off, to you because um, not many men come on the show. Really? Because this whole space is about being vulnerable and open about your weaknesses. So I just feel like no, not a lot of men, you know, are brave enough to admit some of their I weaknesses. Think, I honestly think that's one of the saddest things about our society is that men are taught that they need to be strong and vulnerability and weakness is wrong. The truth is being open and vulnerable makes you more human and connects you more with the world around you. So thank you for being one of the few men on the Nally Show. Merci beaucoup. Steven is an amazing singer. I absolutely love your voice thank you. and your music. Thank you. And I want to know where did this passion for music start? Where was when it born? Yeah, when did you start singing? Growing up, my mom was obsessed with Michael Jackson. You know, when you're when you're a kid and all you hear around the house is Michael Jackson, Michael mm -hmm. Jackson. And I think the thing about Michael that really drew me in was when I'd watch his shows on TV and I'd see the way people react. Like mm -hmm. literally people would faint and people would lose their minds and they'll be drawn into his his state. Like he would create this emotional state with each song and he would just draw people in. Mm -hmm. And it was that ability that he had to connect with others that really made me want to get into music. Yeah. Like I wanted to be able to speak to people in that way, to speak to them beyond use you know without just using words but also just using my presence and emotion as a as a trigger. But you're totally right. It's not what people say or do that makes them memorable. It's how you make people feel. Yeah, right? exactly. And I think you definitely do that through your music. Thank you. But uh, speaking of your mom, okay. who said you said that really inspired you. She's the one who loved Michael Jackson. Yeah. Um, you have a special story, right, about your mom. This whole, whole episode is about channeling your pain. Yeah. So would you like to share your story of with course, people? Of course, of um, course. And this, this goes back to 2010. Um, that, that For me, that's the, the year that defined the person I would either become or the person that or the, or the thing that would destroy me. That was the passing of my mom. That year she passed away was, was nine days after my birthday. And the night before I was doing the show, while I was doing rehearsals, I got a, a call from, you know, from my mom. She's, she told me she's in the hospital. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know what, I'm not doing the show. I'm gonna cancel the show right now. I'm coming down, you're more important. And she said, no, do your show. I'll be okay, it's a small thing. I'll be out of here in the morning. So anyway, I did the show. And while I was doing the show, my mom was dying. I remember the next morning because I got back home and I was high on the adrenaline of the show. Yeah. So I was recording a song and I was like a few minutes late to go pick her up. So I finished the song and I was on my way to go get her. And as soon as I opened the door, I got a call from the doctor and, and they said, um, he said, oh, are, you, are you Steven? I said, yes. I said, oh, your mom passed away. And, 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 and things like that instant moment was shock. Absolutely. And so I said, what do you mean she passed? Like, like for me, that yeah. didn't make any sense. Like, what do you mean? It's like, just, just wake her up. And that year for me was just the pinnacle of the worst. I mean, and I don't want to talk about all the things I did, but I was in a constant fade. I was constantly under the influence of something. I won't say which things because I'm not trying to go to jail. Um, <laughs> Very bad things that you don't should not do. Stay away. 
But I was under, under the influence of, of these things because I wanted to, to just be numb. I didn't want to yeah. feel anything. And how bad did the pain get? How bad did it go? I'm not gonna lie. You know, a lot of people talk about, I thought about suicide. Yeah. You know, I Yeah, I've had a that. couple of people on the, on the show actually admit that they had suicidal thoughts. thoughts. Yeah, I didn't, I went way beyond the thoughts. I actually did it. Um, and, and, and yeah, I, I remember that day vividly. I just, everything had just been progressing to the point of just, I couldn't take it anymore. And I said, you know, today I'm, I'm just gonna, I'm done. And I went to the pharmacy and I went to go buy the, you know, bunch of, um, sleeping pills, like multiple packages. I went home and I just started popping them. And at the point I didn't realize how and what I was doing. I was just doing it. And, um, it's when I got up that I realized that, wait a second, you're, you're dying. I remember that feeling of dying. It was a very, it's like a vacuum. It's almost you're being sucked into yourself. Okay. And I remember that feeling so vividly. And all I did was pick up my phone and I texted my siblings. I said, I'm sorry. And that's the last memory. Um, I woke up the next day in the hospital. You know? Wow. I wish I could say that I had gone to that point, thought about suicide and said, no, I'm not doing this. No, mm -hmm. I got to the point, thought about suicide, did it. And I survived because maybe some part of me wanted to hold on and that's the part that texted my siblings yeah. a very cryptic message knowing that they'd figure out that something is wrong um so deep down i was fighting but it was a really just a bit part yeah. of myself i was lucky um in the sense that they saw what was happening and they called the hospital and, and then i woke up the next day in the hospital and i don't believe in luck yeah. i think you are meant to be here for a reason and that you survive this small chance of surviving for a reason yeah. i believe i see that and i hear it and i feel it through your music at what point did you turn to music you know like what was the spark that like lit your revelation that you know you you're meant to be here and then you're gonna make some good music to help others and to help yourself. It was that day that when I came out of, when I was at that moment of awareness, when I looked in the mirror and I saw myself sunken eyes, angry, sad, just a complete mess of myself. And I saw that person and, and then I realized for a split second that I was hurting myself. I was not just hurting myself, I was hurting the people around me, the people that cared about me. I didn't care. It was like a year after this, my mom was passing and I said, mm -hmm. enough is enough. You have to do something mm -hmm. and i just turned to the only thing i could turn to and and, and that was music i just started writing how i mm -hmm. felt writing my my emotions writing my story and just recording um and that allowed me to channel the pain and release it not just metaphorically but also mm -hmm. literally releasing it because when you're singing you're literally yeah. releasing you know so i released it and, and slowly but surely that that helped so are you able to say that you are happy with who you are right now today oh gosh, I, in front of I, everybody? I love myself. <laughs> I, I love myself. Have you, Hell seen, yeah. have you seen all of this? Seen all of this? What's look, not there to love, this, right? Like look, this, look, this, look, this, look at that. Look at the tattoos this, that hurt. The, that hurt. <laughs> Honestly, Steven, I think your mom would be so, so, so Thank proud you. of you. Thank because you. even the fact that she was like, no, don't come to the hospital. Go perform. I think all she wanted was for you to take those steps. You yeah. know, to then reach and surpass your goal yeah. which you're doing so I think that's the best you could ever do for her yeah. now everything you just said is amazing but it's so easy to say it I know you're watching and you're like how how yeah. do I how do I channel my pain and then turn it into amazing music or turn it into videos like I'm doing today and the reason why Steven's here today is because we want to give you five tips to channel your pain because we believe that this is something anyone can do yeah Definitely. So you ready? I'm ready. To share your knowledge. Did you ready to hear it? <laughs> no. Did you ready to hear it? <laughs> One, allow yourself to feel the pain, respect the feeling. I think the biggest mistake that most people do is that they try to sweep it under the rug, they try to just bandage it and move on. But that's all they're doing, just kind of putting a temporary, it's just temporary relief. If you do that, in time that pain comes back. And it usually comes back when you're going through something else and it'll compound with whatever is happening. And that makes that pain even harder to deal with. So that's why whenever you go through things, just allow yourself to be in that moment. It allows you to really understand where you are, why you're there, and start to see a way forward. I, I don't think you can personally understand happiness 
if you don't understand pain. Mm -hmm. My example is having stage four metastatic breast cancer. Everyone's like, how is Nally so positive and yeah. she's making videos every week? But like, I had to grieve. Like, you know, ask anyone. Like, I went MIA for two weeks yeah. where I was just staring at the ceiling, locked up in my room. But I had to go through that moment to then, you know, have these videos for you. If exactly. I didn't, then this, this wouldn't be real. This wouldn't be authentic. Number two. Look for the lessons in it. Life is trying to teach you something. When you fail at something, you have two choices. Choice one is, I failed, blah, and you just give up, right? But that doesn't do anything for you, you just give up. You don't, you don't know your full potential. Mm -hmm. Number two is, you'll look at what went wrong, and you look for the lessons in it, and then from there you can see, okay, this is what I did wrong, I can now re-strategize and come back better. And then you can come back even stronger. It's the same thing about pain. When you're in pain, life is trying to teach you something. It's trying to teach you something most likely about you. So what was your big lesson in your pain? My big lesson was I didn't want to be that person that I that I was. The person that was, you know, taking drugs and addicted to everything under the earth. The person that didn't care about his actions affecting others. I didn't want to be that person, that was the biggest lesson was that I had the potential to be that person. Mm. So I needed to do everything in my power to not be that person. I think that's the biggest thing about, about life in general is mm -hmm. that you can't really move forward until you acknowledge mm -hmm. that something needs to happen. Three. Three, channel your emotions, turn the darkness into light. I took my pain and I transformed it into music that I was then able to use as a means to you, you know, express myself and release my, my pain and my sadness. Mm -hmm. I took something that was really dark and I transformed it into, into, into beauty. And I think that's a pivotal part of, of getting out of whatever situation you're in is to take that anger or pain or sorrow or whatever it is and transform it into something that is beautiful. And I think we all have the potential for, uh, for that. I think a lot of people think that, well, it's easier for creative people because you can create. But here's an example, my place got flooded and I was in, like, in a mess. And that same day, a good friend of mine, Sooks, who's been on the show, <laughs> so I said, let's just stop for a second, let's go into the mountain, so there's a mountain, there was a mountain near my house, and let's just go there, and I was like, okay, fine. And he said, just scream, and I did, and I released so much, I just, like, I turned all that frustration into just like, kind of bliss, yeah. you know, I felt so relieved. And the second I did that, my clarity came back, and I was like, okay, this happened, fine, you've been too worse, Steven, let's start rebuilding. And I started, instantly in my head, I had put a plan forward for the next four months as to how I would rebuild my studio, rebuild my music, and have a new place. Because of that, I'm here today, <laughs> and my studio is even better than it ever was before. I love that, I feel like I need to do that. <laughs> release it somehow. I love that you're saying that because I'm sure you're watching and you're like, well, I'm not a blogger and I'm not a, a singer. Like, oh, Natalie and Steven are super creative, but what about me? Like, yeah. uh, I, I, I can't channel my pain because I'm not a creative person, but you just proved that this, you can channel to whatever you want to channel, whether it's screaming on top of a mountain, going to the gym, there's yeah. always something that you can turn your pain into something positive. Number four. four. Share your story and that story will change the world and in turn change you. Preach. Preach. When I started to share my music, people would respond and tell me how that music was in turn saving them, if you will, or giving them the encouragement to move forward. And it opened up my eyes because suddenly my very unidirectional or omnidirectional you know, belief of just trying to save myself opened up and suddenly it was a two, it was this bi-directional. I was putting my stuff out there and, and channeling my emotions and at the same time that was helping people and that encouraged me to keep moving forward. So it changed me, it transformed my own my own perspective changed because suddenly it wasn't just about me. It was about everyone and 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 you know I wasn't I didn't feel alone anymore. You know, I felt like I was part of a bigger picture and my actions had influence and I could help change the world in a positive way. I think it's important that we're never ashamed of our pain yeah. and our story yeah. because you have no idea who you're going to inspire. Even with social media these days, we're always constantly thinking about pleasing everybody, yeah. you know? And I think 
all that's important is to know that there's always gonna be one, just one person who's gonna relate to your story and be like, oh my God, I thought I was alone. Yeah. And that's what I realized putting my story out there, being diagnosed at only 24 and finding other young women in their early 20s diagnosed with breast cancer. But they're not gonna relate to you maybe, yeah. but that doesn't matter because they could relate to me. And your story by putting it out, maybe this person watching is gonna relate to you, but they can't relate to me. Hence why I always wanna interview more people and yeah. share other stories out there. And even just with that thought in mind, it's so worth it. Yeah. Because you're helping yourself, but you're gonna help others. And what's beautiful is that you connect with people that you never thought you'd connect with before. Yeah. Kind of like how we're we're connected. We're, we're we're friends now, right? I guess. We're, no? I thought you were my bestie about that. Oh one. yes, okay. We're best friends now, but we wouldn't have been best friends if you wouldn't have shared a story with I me. I know. Today. Jeez. Yes, I? Yes, I? And the last tip. Mm -hmm. Number, Number five. five. Find beauty in the things you once overlooked. That's where you'll find answers to questions you didn't even know you had. Rewind. Say what? What does that mean? I know. It's a, it's a, it's a mouthful. Yeah. People go to work every single day. They have a very, you know, unidirectional view. They're going to work. They're looking forward. They're looking down. It's, you know, rinse and repeat. Um, they get caught in this kind of cycle of and just, they just kind of, just all they're doing. And then one day they decide to look up and they see a building that they didn't, really ever pay attention to and it has architecture they're like wow that that is beautiful and that has always been in my path and suddenly it makes them realize that this path that i've been taking every single day is much bigger than i thought it was it's a lot bigger there are things i didn't even know existed and that's the thing and that for me is how you begin to really heal is when you shift your perspective. My analogy kind of has something to do with mountains yeah. as well, where I always compare my journey to climbing a really steep mountain, yeah. where it's so easy to just kind of keep your head down, like, you know, crouch your back and focus on how much it hurts to be walking up. Your calves hurt, your mm -hmm. legs hurt, your butt hurts, your back hurts. But all you got to do is lift your head up. Yeah and look around you and enjoy the beautiful view, the scenery, the trees, the flowers, the animals, the, the fresh air. There's so much you can do to just flip your perspective and I think that's exactly like such an important point because anyone can just simply lift their head up and yeah. open their eyes and, and look that's around. It. And just see the beauty. See the beauty. And now it is time for the random question. Ooh. You cannot be on the Nally show without me asking you. Okay. If you can please sing us a song. <laughs> <laughs> what are you gonna sing? What are you gonna say? So let's just let's just do something spontaneous. Yes! Freestyle! Freestyle! Can you sing a song about the Nally show? Like a jingle? Yeah, like like my new theme song! Alright, alright, right, hold on, hold on. It's good. <clears throat> yes. Me, 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 me. <clears throat> yes. Ready? Yeah. Action. You're watching Nally. On the Nelly show, and she's so beautiful. I said, Yeah, watch your Nelly. Ah, the Nelly show. That was amazing. Jeez. Oh, All the girls watching at home are like, Melting in their chairs right now. Good. Something, something, totally it. using it. Just My new jingle. Copyright infringement. <laughs> <laughs> now we have a question for you. Mm. How do you channel your pain? What do you do? Are you creative? Are you not? Do you scream on mountaintops? What do you do? Let us know in the comments section below. If you fell in love with Steven Voice and you'd like to follow him, his information is right there. It's on my crotch area apparently. That's where it is. <laughs> if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to share it to anyone in need. If you want to watch my vlogs, they're up there. If you want to watch my last episode, it's down there. <laughs> Don't forget to subscribe. I release videos every Monday. Be patient, be kind to yourself. Be here in your moment. Be there in theirs. Hmm, that is small to be. Yeah. Bye, see you next week. Look at that. Yeah, Look at that. we're like, we're like <laughs> head twins.